So with that, we're gonna start with, okay, we've covered curb appeal, preparing your house for sale, and getting it ready for showings. Mm -hmm. um, and so the great day when you get your first offer. Oh, well, we've um, listed your house, we showed your house. Um, we've given yeah. you a profit market analysis of what's mm -hmm. going on in mm -hmm. it, and market it, and we put it up for sale. You had showings. Chance. Somebody loves it and wants to write an offer on your house. So. Mm -hmm. So they, they provide us what's called a residential contract of sale. Mm -hmm. And what we kind of wanted to go over with you are just some of the elements in the contract mm -hmm. that you'll want to look at. One of our jobs is we do review all the contracts, mm -hmm. you know, when we share them with you. So mm -hmm. we can help sort of summarize things for you, but we do recommend you look through them. But Anna, talk to us about some of the important features well, of the contract. That's, that's, that's the important thing, is that we need to realize there are important things. I mean, it's a state mandate contract. There's nothing you can do that um, possibly counters some items on it, but a lot of the items are what they are in this contract. And, and if you want to sell your house, you have to come to some agreement terms and, and be done. So basically, with this, you know, when you get the contract, it's a little bit to show yeah. you. Yeah, how many pages is that? Well, this it's is a lot just of the contract. Right. This is just 10 pages. This is not all the addendums, um, all the things that the state keeps adding on because lawyers like to add addendums for us. <laughs> um, it, we have um, basically in the residential contract of sale, when someone writes you an offer, the important things that you have to remember is that time is of the essence. And basically when somebody makes you this offer, they literally have, we have to give them an answer fairly quickly. We and can't there's just basically sit. one of three things you can do when you receive it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can accept it, mm -hmm. you can counter it, mm -hmm. or you can reject it. Exactly. Oh, right. Exactly. So um, it'll have the seller's name, your name, the buyer's name, if you're a buyer, um, the property address, the pop, most of the property in this area is um, fee simple. Basically, it's saying that there's no condo ground rent. Um, some of the areas are starting to have the ground rent and the um, front foot fees, but basically in the um, Tri-County area, we don't have too much of Can that. Can you really quickly explain kind of what ground rent is? What, what might um, be an example of a location that has ground rent? Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, okay. uh, Baltimore City. Um, basically, what it is is um, you never actually own the ground. You rent it. <laughs> so but you own the, the house, house. The house it sits on, but you pay a fee forever, basically. I think it's like 99 years after. Actually, oh, wow. that you will pay for that land as long as you own that house. Um, okay. Of course, it are transferred to someone else if someone else, um, you know, purchased the property. Um, fee simple means you don't have to worry about any of that. You own a lot land, the air, you you have all those rights. Okay, so um, my understanding, which I think you can Google it, um, is the ground rent is based off of an old, especially in Baltimore County, something to do originally with the Indians owning the land and, okay. uh, and something to give back to them basically. But that was, you need to verify that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, a good Google, huh? so Something to look at. Um, the next thing would be your purchase price basically. You, um, you know, what the purchase price is. We're hoping you get a full, full list price on offer our, yeah. on it. Um, but most people's agents tell them, well most buyers nowadays are very um, tech savvy so they look things up on the internet. They may do their they own make, market analysis. Yeah, and they tend to see think, the value oh, well, but I don't want to offer all that. I want to offer this. So that's our job to come mm -hmm. in and say, but this is what the comps show. This is where you should be. We're going to give you comps if you're a buyer and say, okay, if we're going to make an offer on this on this house, this is what seems to be a fair market um, mm -hmm. value for this time. So just while we're touching on the purchase price, what would be some considerations that okay we're, we're talking about this from a seller's perspective but maybe from a buyer's perspective that they would use to consider the purchase price maybe if they need closing mm -hmm. assistance mm -hmm. or other contingencies well that like, will be in there and that's another part of the contract one of the addendums is a seller subsidy closing assistance okay. but um basically when you, hopefully we priced if we are your listing agents mm -hmm. um we've priced your house absolutely perfect you know for what it's everything you put into it everything that we see out there um, and we can justify that to a buyer's agent um, but a buyer's they everybody wants to get a deal everybody yes. wants to get a deal um, so everybody's like comes in with a lower price it's, it's nothing to be offended about it's business it's so hard I know you people love their homes and it's personal yeah, it's very personal some yeah. people can be offended by yeah. it but yeah. I think business. my attitude that I tell people is 
just give us an offer. It's the beginning of a conversation. We're just right. having a conversation right. as the beginning of the negotiation process. Right. And nine times out of ten, that's what you are doing is yeah. negotiating. Yeah. Very few times you get the perfect beginning. contract. Yeah, 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 exactly. I do. I go, once I get that offer, I talk to my seller. I go, okay, now the games are beginning. Right. <laughs> so, you know, this is just back and forth. And that's our jobs as agents is to do that and cut you out of that what some people feel is kind of uh, it's kind of a headache ugly, for them you know, yeah it's, kind of a, it's an uncomfortable feeling to people yes. they have to negotiate and and we take that off <laughs> your hands so. exactly so there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that yeah. i think people don't realize oh, you know with yeah. the negotiation we, we do things to try to make things happen and people don't even know sometimes that we we literally give up or you know you know deal with things like okay we'll do this if you do this type of thing yes and, you know we try to, and we try to not bother you with those things as long as it's not something that has to be disclosed right um we don't try to bother you with things that you know we can fix you know yeah. for you that's our job because the Take bottom line is we want to sell the house and they want to buy it so there's the, you do end up reaching some common ground yeah. and it's part of the negotiation yeah. process so then we move on to the payment terms they have to do an emd good faith um it's basically they have to give a deposit for something. An earnest money deposit. Is the Such a tricky thing. People think that's my money. When the seller sees it, they go, "That's my money. I get to keep it if this falls apart." Well, that's not always the case. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, it's really the buyer's money, um, unless they default somehow, and you can prove they default. And usually, even with that, um, unless they agree to release that money mm -hmm. to you. Um, that money just gets tied up in limbo land. And usually it's the seller's brokerage that holds that earnest yes. money deposit. Yes. So yes. it's sort of an escrow. It's just kind of hanging there yeah. until the deal yeah. goes through. Yeah. So. Just since they're making no money and if the deal goes through, which that's our plan, mm -hmm. um, then it goes towards their closing help or um, down payment But assistance. that money is specifically to let you know how serious, serious. they are about good the faith. offer that they're making. Showing yeah. good faith. It's like a handshake. Um, and then they can do additional deposits. Sometimes people ask for additional deposits or um, with the short sales nowadays, uh, people have listed, um, they literally um, may not give the whole down payment, um, the EMD money up front because you know, that money's being tied up for months sometimes at a yeah. time. So if it's a... Yeah, you know, especially in the short sale process, yeah, which takes so. longer. What typically do you see as the earnest money deposit? $1,000. $1,000? Yeah. Okay. $1,000 is usually what we see. Um, then it goes into a non-interest bearing account. You know, like Kimberly mm -hmm. said, it just kind of sits in the account and, and doesn't do anything, just sits there. Um, and the broker is in charge of that, then they have to be... And that money actually isn't deposited until the contract's ratified, until both right. parties agree, agree on it. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of we're holding on to it until we've, we've got a deal, yeah. Yeah. then it goes to the brokerage and they hang on to it until right. settlement. Right, exactly. Um, and then we have settlement date. And um, usually... 45 days is right. the normal right now. And um, that's typically driven by the loan process, right? Process, right? right. How long right. it takes to get a loan process. And sometimes we'll see that date fluctuate based on people's needs. If it's the seller and they need more time to move or yeah. whatever you reason. You have house you still need to get. Yeah. Um, which we tell people that they need, the seller needs a home of choice. Um, right. You know, we see that. And, and that's a contingency. Yeah, something like mm -hmm. that. And people... Um, or like I just did in the state, which I think I talked mm -hmm. about not too long ago. Um, and of course we had to get permission from the orphans court things, different steps had to take place. So we had to put our date out a little further than, you know, the normal 45 days. And, and it is, it's a loan underwriting process that people go through. It's, it's a process that the lender pretty much dictates yeah. to the, the days. So it's have. usually say 45 yeah, days. It's normally 45. Um, and then it just tells you a little bit about the financing, what type of finance. If they're doing VA, FHA, USDA, those type of different programs, which we could probably get into later. But there are some really great programs. Like it would be a great to bring a lender yeah. on to talk yeah. about the programs. Yeah. So maybe we can get a lender out to talk about the different programs that some people come in with. Um, there's even owner financing, like say... You know, if someone wants to buy your house and um, they can't get the financing right now that they need or some repairs need to be done on that house, you can hold owner financing. They make you, I've done this, where they make payments to, to the seller and they have a time period. We usually set it to a lawyer. They sit down and, you know, write up some paperwork to say that you've got a year to get this done. You have to make payments to me. Um, it's actually very beneficial to the seller sometimes okay. if they can do this. So it's not a bad um, 
um, route to go. Um, we forgot to tell you, we don't have. Um, <laughs> we don't have our, this is our coffee chat. Well, yeah, ice it's coffee hot out today, so. too. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot today, too. Um, okay, so the next thing would be, you know, telling you how many days it'll take to get their financing application in. Usually within, you know, once they've come to these agreement of terms, mm -hmm. within three days, usually they've met with the lender again, started getting all their paperwork over. And make a formal application. Right, because mm -hmm. originally it's just... Um, it's almost like pre-qualification pre where I think um, Jeff Gay with Southern Trust Mortgage told us this, that, you know, the original pre-qualification process there is just information that they are trusting that you give mm -hmm. to them in terms of how much you make and the debt that you have and when you make the formal loan application then they're actually asking for pay stubs and tax returns and mm -hmm. things like that and mm -hmm. putting it through the process and, and so. proof. basically right. they run it through some system right and the lenders run it through a system and it tells them okay this person looks good to buy so that's what the pre-qual comes from okay. is usually their credit looks good and um, I guess they have a semi debt debt to income, right. but of course those don't give them some hidden stuff that may be out there. Exactly. And that's why they need within simply a week. Um, they can give us a better idea of what's going on. And you them. mentioned that, and, and we mentioned earlier on that this is just the contract with Sam. There's a lot of supporting documents that go with it, but one of which is that we look for is a pre-qualification or pre-approval letter yeah. from the lender mm -hmm. of the buyer um, that's usually attached to that. And we definitely right. like the pre-approvals yeah. because that means that they probably already initiated the loan yeah. process and they've gone it's, a little bit farther. And we have found that some of the companies, um, we, and we know the difference between different lenders, types of lenders, but some lenders do an underwritten, underwriting process ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So it actually gives us a quick Exactly. Idea. And, and that's really what we want thing. to look for you as a seller yeah. is to know that we've got yeah. good buyers. Right, you know, right, we have been right. pre approved. So, we know these things. We know the lenders. I mean, because we've been doing this for so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally think I know just about every lender that I know will get a deal through. Mm -hmm. You know, if they mm -hmm. said to me, Hey, Anna, you know, I've got a pre qual letter for you. They're sending, I'm sending it over. I'm working with so and so agent with their buyers. Um, and I know they want to write on your um, listing. You know, I know that person. I usually know whether they're going to send me a good deal or not. You know, so that so. sort of begs the question, and I don't know if we're allowed to say this. Yeah, that's what I was careful. <laughs> like sometimes, like is um, it, why it's so important to see a lot of the things that come through, especially if you have more than one offer and mm -hmm. you're sort of comparing things. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and you compare lenders and everything. So if a lender's done right by us and we see that he's constantly getting those deals to the table, mm -hmm. we're going to tell you. If we see a lender, unfortunately, um, that looks like. They, you know, deals are constantly, and I, I don't know whether, you know, I, right. you know, I just, we know the difference between those. It's, it's great to have the relationships that you have in the industry because you get to know the people, mm -hmm. and you know that you have a lender that's responsive, that's and they are, they're business. constantly, um, you know, on top of things, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they have a great success rate, like exactly. you said, of yeah. getting the things through. So there's a lot of things that we look at sort of that aren't even in writing on, in paper, you know, in terms of... That you um, as a seller or buyer most likely would not know. Exactly. And we do know because we're in the business so um, which is you know that's our job is to take care of you exactly we represent the seller or the buyer and that's who we take care of um, there's there is it does allow you in the um, app in the contract that if you did do financing and you get to the lender and you find out well you know what this program would be way better for the person they may have started out with an FHA loan right. and found out hey they have they used to be in the military they could use VA, VA instead. and that's it's a whole better deal because they're not putting any money down, right. but they've got the, instead of 3.5% they're putting down, they can in for 100% financing. So the contract allows them to switch financing. Okay. They're, they're allowed to do that. Um, then it goes over home inspections, which we talked about. And actually, we have a special guest yeah. coming next week. What a great intro yeah. for yeah. Um, but Michelle Perry with All in One Home Inspections yeah. is going to be our first guest yeah. on our show next time. Yeah. And we're talking specifically about the different home inspections and mm -hmm. how important they are for both the seller and the buyers. Absolutely. It is. It is. It's good to know. I mean, you want to know what your house, that's your investment. Mm -hmm. And even people go, oh, well, my house is perfect. Well, no house is perfect. I wish my house was perfect, but it's got issues. Everybody right. does. Um, and it's about maintenance. It's important to have that maintenance and exactly. take care of it. And we're going to, like, like we talked before, we're coming out to tell you, you need to do this, 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 and this, but there's hidden things we may not know. Exactly. And that's what inspection And every is. buyer, if they have a good realtor, is going to advise that they get a home inspection. And there's all different types of things that yeah. you can get inspected, but... 
um, you as a seller have to be prepared for that because um, most likely if there are some issues that come up in the home inspection, they're going, the buyer is going to ask you to make repairs or, or you know. Yeah. And this um, is important. I mean, this isn't a big investment to anybody. So it's important you take care of your home. If you know that you probably, your house is older, then maybe you should be having some GFCI plugs in the kitchen bathrooms that, you, that were never installed because it wasn't to code at that point. Exactly. So maybe that's something to look at. You right. Know? And we would notice that. Um, sometimes they're not seen. It, it's by the breaker box. So we don't know sometimes that they're actually there until the home the inspector home tells us. Right. Yeah. And all these things are negotiable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We, we deal with, there's a difference between cosmetic and... Um, you know, which is structural and mechanical and plumbing, there's safety issues. Right, and those addressed. things are important because yeah. those are things, are issues going back to that appraisal mm -hmm. segment that we had. If the appraiser comes out and sees that these things aren't done, they may require it before yeah. allowing the lender to. Yeah, to because there's no loan. loan. So you have to either repair them or the loan falls apart. So um, and the next thing on there is we it just gives a list in the contract of what you decide to to what's in the house if they're you know your refrigerator your dishwasher washer and dryer if you're going to leave them so we have to have all that listed basically so your inclusions so and your exclusions. exclusions right so say you and have they're a, usually saying that uh, when they're doing your, your listing agreement mm -hmm. before you put it on the market mm -hmm. is they're indicating which things are saying and which aren't right right and um you know, I mean, sometimes people want, and we'll, I will, I, I know Kimberly will too, if you have this really great light fixture that you're like, no, 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 that's got to come with me, well, take it down. Yeah. Don't even make it, it a question, because if mm -hmm. you think it's that great, someone else is going to think it's that great, and they want it in that house. Exactly. So the best thing is to replace it with something nice, and um, just take it down and pack it away, yeah. so you don't have to, you know. Um, but that's the exclusions and inclusions. Um, playground sets, sometimes people want to take up their playground sets. Right, and, sheds. Know, so, sheds. So you need to let us know um, when we meet and do list your property, what you're going to, we'll go over our list with you. Um, it, if the house has forest conservation behind it, a lot of the new developments do, we need to know that so people can't, don't think, well, there's a little bit of a tree line back there, I can come in and cut down my trees. So we have to disclose those kind of things. These are disclosures. If your house was built before 1978, there's a possibility of lead-based paint. Mm -hmm. So we have to um, disclose those too, and if you've had any treatments. Um, most houses have been what they call encapsulated. They've been painted over so many times that there is no more lead-based paint. If you've replaced, the biggest issue is windows and doorways. It's the the door, the seals, the door, um, the jams, you know, all this, the molding around it. If you've had them replaced, more than likely it's no longer there. But, you know, if you've got the original wood windows and you're past 78, there's a good possibility they're going to find some lead-based paint if they test for it. And um, a lot of people nowadays, there's so many, like, in the home inspection report, as we talked about, there's the radon and there's the, you know, there's the home, there's the structural and mechanical, which is the basic one. But then there's mold and radon and fireplace and chimney. Um, the, they want to inspect all those things, lead-based paint. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of them. So they could, some of them like say, I'm going to do them all. And then they find out how much it costs and it's, yeah, because the expense is one that they will have to bear as the yeah. buyers. Yeah. They would have to pay for all the inspections. So the contract, the section that she's speaking about, actually is where they indicate we plan on doing these type of tests. Yeah. Unless now there is certain things, which I think we're going to get to shortly about the wood destroying insects on the inspection. Um, VA, if you've got a VA buyer, you have to pay for their termite inspection. And that's anywhere from fifty to yeah. seventy-five yeah. dollars usually. Some of them even thirty-five. Yeah, that's some, one of the right um, couple of them. But their so loan does not we'll allow it. for them to pay for right. that. Right, the termite right. Inspection. And um, there's um, septic too. So, yeah. Well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's different things that we'll have to um, address according to who your buyer ends up being and what kind of loan program they have. Um, and it, once again, the lead-based paint talks about the renovations, if you've done any, any windows or, you know, different things, new doors, those type of things, and different programs at um, Bridgeter in Baltimore City. There's a lot of the, um, they have, people have to be registered with the um, lead-based poisoning prevention program, so, because um, there was a lot of lead-based paint in that area, and those, the old row homes and stuff, so. Um, excuse me today. I feel like I'm really congested. <laughs> um, this is a lot of information yeah. too to go over. But our our 
our point is that we just kind of wanted you to know what to expect and what's in it because right. it can be intimidating receiving all this paperwork you know and that's why we take the time to go through it mm -hmm. summarize it for you yeah. you know you definitely want to read it but like these are the types of things that are in this contract yeah. that you'll want to pay attention yeah. to and we may need to note it and we leave it with you to read over but we make note of the important things everything's important but there are some that are like even more important and we want you to be aware of them um, we did just touch on the termite basically that's just a test to make sure you don't have any you know, if, if banks and they're all required, money, yeah, right. It's yeah. not an optional. No, because the banks get a lot of money. They want to know that at any moment now the house isn't going to fall. Right, that is okay. structurally it's sound yeah. and yeah. not yeah. wasting away from uh, yeah. termites. Yeah, and they can do carpenter bees do a lot of damage. Mm. Um, there's a lot of um, you know wood burrowing um, insects, and they can do some damage to structures. So right. you know. Um, look around your house. If you see a lot of ants, you might want to get a company out there to take a look at and make sure they're not just regular ants. Um, I get ant. I think everybody gets ants. Um, you know, and I had I was getting worried, so I had someone come out and he said they're just regular ants excavating. But I swear one of these days my S house is going to excavate into a big hole. <laughs> <laughs> I spray, but they, those ants are pretty um, strong. So um, or carrying my house off. <laughs> But um, I think we live in a kind of sandy kind of yeah. area, and they seem to like that, you know. Yeah. So, um, that we, you know, there's um, deposits that how they're held, and like we talked about, we hit on a little bit that they were put in an escrow account, and if there is any um, default on anyone's case, and or someone wants out because someone wouldn't do the repairs, mm -hmm. because if you don't do the repairs, the buyer can back out. Right. Um, so yeah, what, and those are some of the contingencies that we were talking about. What are some of the ways that they can back out from yeah, the deal? Yeah. Um, I think this is a big one. So yeah. I do think this is an important thing yes. to get on. And um, so many people think, like I said, that money saves that they do. And then, you know, you say, no, I'm not gonna replace that broken window. Well. The appraiser is going to want it, which means the lender is not going to lend money. And if you don't do it, then the buyer gets the right to say, I exactly. don't have Is it worth it to blow yeah. the whole deal yeah. off of, you know? Yeah. So it's like, then it becomes maybe a deposit issue because the buyer is saying, well, you didn't do what I want. And you're saying, but I held my house up for 20 some days, you know, and now you want your money back and you're walking away. Um, unfortunately, um, that money might be just tied up. It can go as far as going to be put at the, at the courts and mediation. Yeah, so they ask that you always do um, mediation before you do court because mm -hmm. you're responsible for your fee. It's more fees. I don't even know if it's, most of the time if it's worth a thousand dollars. You know, it's like just nobody will end up with any money. Um, please, if you have questions, ask us any questions that you may have about this yeah. stuff. But, um, we usually get the questions after we send them the yeah, contract, and they'll say, yeah, what does this mean? Yeah, and, you know, yeah. can you kind of explain the verbiage? I mean, it's a legal binding contract written by attorneys, so mm -hmm. it can be, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. confusing. Yeah, we're not attorneys. We Nor do we pretend it. to be them. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, then it's, the contract just basically starts hitting on. This is when it becomes nothing that anybody changes. It's all about... The lawyers. <laughs> yeah. So there's pages and pages of nothing gets changed. It's just what part of the state mandated contract is, and um, talks about the deed and title has to be clear, which we'll have the title person. Yes, on. we are. Mm -hmm. um, so she'll be able to talk to us. Um, uh, it's going to be Connie from Foot Title. I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she'll be coming and she'll talk a little more about that deed and title, clear how it's, it's supposed to be clear for you and. Uh, what they do to make sure it's clear for you. Mm -hmm. um, the condition of the property, you can't trash your house, you can't rent, yank stuff out of it, or I really like that cabinet, so I'm taking it off the wall. Right. You can't do that. So um, these state that, that you have to have the house and condition. all each page of this contract requires that each party initials the bottom, just right. to say that you've read through right. it all. Talks about the settlement costs, which the title person will go over with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and transfer charges, first time buyer gets a discount. Mm -hmm. um, for our liability, um, our fees, it hits on that. The seller's responsibility, the buyer's responsibility. Basically, it means you guys move forward to get this deal done. And if you don't, then you're in default. And uh, you can't just go, you know what, I changed my mind halfway through, I'm not gonna sell my house. You can't just change your mind. You have to have a legitimate reason. I mean, if something, a job falls through and you're leaving the state. Specifically then, for yeah, that. Yeah, then that's a reason. But you can't just go, eh, don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So, um, that talks about homeowners association, um, ground run again, which we hit on. Um, 
can't lease the property while in the middle of the sale. <laughs> right. And the homeowners association, if you are um, or selling a home and you are in a in a homeowners association, um, you have to turn over like the articles of incorporation and all the documents for the buyer to review, and that is another way for them to get out of the purchase, right? right if they don't agree with the right. documents. Right. So and we like so, to see those documents as soon as possible to the buyer, right? Because they have a three day, they can get out of, they can say, you know what, I don't like what this HOA is telling me right. to do. So. But there is a fee often associated with yeah. it, and you have to get a resale certificate, and that basically just states that you're in good standing with the HOA, and that there are no liens or anything against. You know the house or architectural, like they find that you put up a fence that nobody approved, right? Those kinds of and things, things like so. that that have to be mm -hmm. um, fixed too. So. Now, in the state of Maryland, the buyer is allowed to pick their own title settlement company, their own title company. Um, so most of the times they do that. Um, sometimes it, there can be special requests of it for us to request it. You settle with someone if, if we do that in terms of short sale. If yeah. the if the um, title company is already working to yeah. negotiate the deal, it makes the settlement a little bit easier. So yeah. in those or instances, if there's a title or a state or something a little different that mm -hmm. has to be handled, and maybe the title company's already been handling yes. it. So um, then we let the buyer's agent know that you know we. We're making a special request to use a particular title company. Um, there's property owner's title insurance. You have to keep your title insurance on the house until you, you sell it. And we ought, we ought so many times say keep it for a few days after because to make sure the transfer took place and everything. Um, you um, There's all these different disclosures about the new RESPA rules and... Um, Things are a little different, which the title company hit on. We used to get HUDs. We no longer get HUDs. We get CDs. Mm -hmm. um, they're closing disclosures, and it keeps it's a privacy thing. It keeps the buyer's information in one place and the seller's in another. And it's really full disclosure, too, is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. It yes. just allows them to see every single fee. They're laid out just a little bit different, but it, it can hold up the process sometimes yeah. with the new laws that have yeah. gone into effect that requires that mm -hmm. everybody get to see a copy of it at least three days prior yeah. to settlement. Yeah, but they do it's it's a little sticky because there's um we don't see like if we're the buyer's agent we can't see the seller stuff but sometimes as agents it, it complicates a little right. bit of stuff for us because there are some certain things the seller pays for that we don't get to see as buyer's agents and then we're like but did that get taken care of so right. we're like scrambling to, mm -hmm. that's our job though so. and unfortunately we don't always get to see it so we yeah. rely a lot on our clients to right. make sure that they, right. that they give the title company right. permission for us to help yeah. review because we'll know the things to look yeah. for yeah you can send it to us they just can't the title companies can't mm -hmm. send it to us um there's a whole section about us about um that we're supposed to represent you, you know, do the right things for you, be fair and honest for both buyers and sellers, and that we aren't allowed to disclose certain information, financial information. So there's a whole section on that um, that we'll go over with you, and um, you know that we're supposed to do legally too, or we can get in big trouble. So mm -hmm. um, there's a whole thing about Maryland non-residents, like if you get taxed more if you aren't if you're selling a house and you don't live in the state of Maryland, your taxes are a little higher. Um, internal Revenue Service, of course, filing. Everybody needs to let the IRS know what you're making. <laughs> so um, about the critical um, coastal bay areas, if we've got for near the water, which are a big thing in the Charles County, Tri-County area, uh, wetlands notice, forest conservation, conservation easements. If you're a foreign investor, once again, that's uh, um, I think you get taxed a little higher on that. Um, there's a thing about criminal activity. I won't really go over that, but um, basically it's not our place to disclose in anything, even if we know it. Um, We're not allowed no, to. You're allowed, you, but you're allowed to check neighborhoods all you want. Mm -hmm. um, military installation. We're a big military area, mm -hmm. which I'm pro-military. So mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all my boys uh, served in the military, so um, military family. Um, we have a lot of planes. We have a lot of things blowing up. We have a lot of, but they're not bad. It's it's, it's actually cool. It feels very safe to me mm -hmm. to be in these locations. Um, great bases around us. So in the contract, it has a notice that we're notifying them mm -hmm. that hey, you're in an area mm -hmm. where you'll hear planes and you'll hear we got Indian Head and Dahlgren that blow up things, mm -hmm. and you might hear a big boom one day and go, what is that? If you don't know the area, we're so accustomed to it, we don't even notice the sounds, right. you know. So. Um, and most but most people that move here that are near military bases tend to be military, so they're kind of used to that. So, um, 
It talks about the property tax appeal. If you're not happy about the taxes on the house, you have a 60-day appeal rule. There's also a little bit which I'll hit on. It doesn't talk about it. It's the homestead credit. Okay. Um, you can you need to file for a homestead credit. So you're when you sell a house, you're the title company usually tells you that you have a certain amount of time, same thing, that you need to file for that because it used to be automatic in the state of Maryland and is no longer, and it gives you a, a tax, additional a tax, tax break. break. Yeah. Um, we cannot assign in the state of Maryland contracts either. If you, if so a buyer made a contract with a seller, you can't go, okay, I'm going to assign it to somebody else. Contract says non-assignability. Um, and then it just talks about the normal, you know, computation of days and paragraph headings and electronic signatures because nowadays oh, everything, everything is electronically <laughs> signed. It makes it easier for everyone, but I guess just to make sure that everybody knows that they're given permission and that a digital signature is a legal Permit. and binding, yeah. you know, and it is signature. now. I think everything is going to go that way, which is a good thing in a way because it's it's green. It's we're you know we're trying to protect the world, you mm -hmm. know. So it's it's a good thing. I know it's a little tricky sometimes, but you know, if I, I'm 55. If I can do it, <laughs> <laughs> you know? and I know there's older people than me doing it, right. so you know it can be done. And it's it's pretty. We can explain it pretty simply. So that's the contract. Yes, there's a million addendums, mm -hmm. which we could do. This it's like 40 some pages, so yeah, um, we could do. Not that to be day. intimidated, because that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We kind of get to help explain, you mm -hmm. know, what each of the things are that you're. Um, signing and why does it seem like we keep getting more and more because somebody thought of something else that we didn't think of like yeah. we have the um, right to farm ordinance yeah. you know yeah. which basically says hey you live in southern Maryland there's farms farms with animals and occasionally from time to time you may smell something or hear something I and stinky it yes is. exactly <laughs> I call it something else <laughs> so that people um, will know that you know from time to time you might be able to smell something yeah, if you live downwind from a pig farm exactly <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of dis disclosures but mm -hmm. what we wanted to do today was just sort of like we've been doing mm -hmm. set your expectations mm -hmm. and let you know that the contracts are really thorough so mm -hmm. um you know leave it to the the real estate yeah real, professionals real estate professionals yeah. um to help guide you through the process but those are the types of things that you'll have to consider um you know once you receive an offer so mm -hmm. yeah important it's very important to have someone who understands we take a, Classes continue, yes, continuing education. Continue education. Um, we'll be in classes later today, so mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, it's important that you have this knowledge. And uh, so many people go, oh, I can sell my own home. Well, kind of putting yourself in a legal place that exactly. you have to be very careful about. Right. So let us make sure that you know, or the realtors out there, let, let somebody make sure that you're taken well care of. Exactly. Great. Well, it was an extra long segment today, but I think it was an important one. And we keep all of these, we upload them to our YouTube channel um, on Southern Maryland Real Estate Network called Keeping It Real Estate so that you can go back and look at it if you want to mm -hmm. sort of review it again. Um, we're super excited. So next week, we have uh, Michelle coming from yeah, All-in-One exactly. Home Inspections. Yeah. We're going to talk about home inspections, so yeah. from the seller's and buyer's perspective. So we have quite a few calendar um, dates set up with different guests and things like that, and we'll try and keep you guys posted with it. But subscribe to our channel, and you'll get notified on Periscope. It's Southern MD Real Estate, and every time we have a show, which has been Wednesdays lately, yeah. between you know 10:30 and 11:30. I think that's our plan is Wednesdays. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it works. It's the middle of the week, and we can let you know other things are going on. So, if you are interested in attending uh, opening day week, I call it weekend opening yeah. weekend for the which Southern starts, Blue Crest tomorrow, tomorrow. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, we are actually going to have a table there on Saturday. It's a double header, so yeah. it's going to be a great time. But we'll yeah. give you some information. We'll have some giveaways and stuff. And if you want to talk about real estate, come by and visit us and watch the game. And yeah. we'd love to meet you. Yeah. But in the meantime, check out our website at somdhomebuyer.com for all the dates on future workshops yeah. for for buying a home if you're yeah. in the home buying process yeah. too. So, hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next week. See you next week.